In this video we're going to have a look at the field effect transistor, also known as a FET. And particularly within this series of videos we're going to be looking at junction FETs, which are abbreviated as JFETs. Alright, best place to start is let's contrast them with a device that you already know quite well, which is the BJT. And on this side we're going to put JFET, although many of these uh, characteristics are those of FETs in general as well. Alright, the B in bipolar is a bipolar device, and it has both whole and electron flow, whereas our JFET is actually a unipolar device, which means it has either whole or electron flow. And we'll have a look at that slightly later as what the implication of that is. In addition, and this is probably the most important one, BJT is a current controlled device, where as you'll remember the base current controls the collect current, whereas our JFET is a voltage controlled device. In fact it's via an applied electric field that controls either the hole or electrons through the device. All right, in this case it's the voltage between gate to source controls the drain current through that device. In addition, our BJT has a well, reasonable or medium input impedance, while JFET has a high, okay, kiloohms or greater input impedance. And that means we get low current flow into the FET to control it. So this becomes a more efficient device in terms of actually controlling its operation. Using a FET, because we don't need to use any current to actually switch it on or off, or very very little, um, it's actually a more efficient device. And therefore our FET is actually preferred for switching applications. And in addition, can be made much smaller than an equivalent BJT. And these two together mean that the FET, not necessarily the JFET, but the FET as a family, um, forms the basis for virtually all modern integrated circuits, okay, or, or at least digital integrated circuits. Alright, so the FETs have really revolutionized the way that we can make small electronic switches that therefore operate within a digital circuit. So very, very uh, widely used through all processes and all digital ICs. Uh, predominantly we'll be using MOSFETs, but falls into the same family as, as uh, field effect transistors and shares many of these same principles. And if you're interested, we'll have a look at MOSFETs in a later video series. All right, BJT, cheap, easy to use. Okay, both of these things uh, apply to the uh, well to the FET as well. Not so much easy to use. We're going to talk about that further on in this video, uh, but they are both fairly cheap um, and normally used for linear small linear applications. All right, so let's have a look at the internal structure. Now I'm going to draw a diagram, which is not how they're physically created, but it will help you and understand how they operate. We have <coughs> three terminals, just like you have on a BJT, except they're given new names. We have 
the gate, G, the drain, D, and the source, S. Within our FET, we'll have some doped regions. All right, this area through the middle is known as the channel. And as you see here, this one has an end doped uh, channel, so it's known as an end channel device. You can also get, less commonly, B channel devices, which would be just the opposite. N in these little areas here, and P in the middle here. So this is a P channel device. So those are the two main families of, or versions of JFETs. And it would have the same terminals on both of them. Now, looking again at our FET here, a couple of interesting things. One is the fact that the gate actually has a really high input impedance. Because of that, very, very little current flows through here. So normally we say that IG is equal to zero, practically. Okay, no currents flowing in there. So that means that this can't be a current control device. It has to use some other mechanism to be able to control the current flowing through this device. In fact, what it does is it creates an electric field. So an electric field is created through here, which actually controls the current flow through this device. Now, when there is no applied electric field, maximum current flows. So, no electric field, maximum current. And when there is a large electric field, you get the minimum current. Right, so it sort of reverses in that sense, and you're going to see why shortly. But just for now, think of it that when you look at this symbol, you can see that these two little uh, nodes here don't constrict this channel, they don't close it, and this is drawn in the normally off position. So this is with no uh, zero volts between these between gate and source. Right, as the voltage from gate to source is brought more negative. We're going to talk about soon. These areas grow, therefore constricting the amount of current until eventually they constrict it until no current flows. That's not practically how they operate, but it's a nice way to understand by looking at the symbol uh, to be able to explain how they work. With respect to the symbol, All right, it's a nice easy symbol. Can also be drawn like this with the arrow down one end. Doesn't mean that the component's any different. It's just different books will draw it in different, slightly different ways or different people. So this is an N channel JFET. And a P channel simply has the arrow pointing in the opposite direction, just like we're used to with. BJTs. However, the not pointing in for NPN doesn't work yet because we see the arrow is pointing in. So, unfortunately, that little uh, rule doesn't quite hold up for family effects. However, once you're used to the names of gate, drain, and source, gate, drain, and source, uh, those exist across uh, MOSFETs as well. So, once you've got used to these new names, um, they'll become quite easy for you. Right, most important voltage here is VGS, which is the voltage here between gate to source. It's not, where a lot of students make a mistake, the voltage from gate to ground. Okay, if you have a resistor between source and ground, then it's not between ground and gate. Okay, it's between this point here. So if you physically put them across the pins of the FET. So VGS, take note, is across the pins of that FET. The other one is VDS which is across the FET itself. So VGS is our sort of control voltage. Right? Remember it's voltage control device, while VDS is the voltage drop across the FET. The other important parameter is the drain current. 
which is what we're trying to control. And in practicality, ID is equal to IS because, as I've already said, little to absolutely no current flows into the gate. Much, much less even than uh, with a BJT. So we can actually make this approximation with a normal equal sign rather than an approximate as we've done in the past. All right, final thing I want to talk about with the JFET or, well, yes, the JFET specifically, is the biasing configuration. Now, I'm going to talk about it with respect to n-channel JFETs, because they're a little easier to understand. And what you'll notice here is that VGS, okay, source and drain, VGS across here, VGS across here. VGS is reverse biased. Whereas VDS is forward biased. And that's quite interesting. And this is why I raised that point earlier. Uh, easy to use? Well, it's arguable for the JFET. You might say it's easy if I've got positive and negative voltage supply rails. Sure, that's fine. If you've only got positive, I'll show you why it's not so convenient. When VGS equals zero volts, so as we said here, no electric field, okay, so VGS equals zero volts, no input voltage here, we get maximum current. And that's what's known as IDSS. All right, maximum current. through the FET, okay, in the absence of any other uh, electronic components, just like I've got in this circuit here. And what it stands for is the current from drain to source, as these two terminals, saturated. Saturated being the maximum that can flow. So we see here, based on this configuration, this is a normally on device which is not really that useful, to be honest. Um, it's more convenient you have a switch that, when you activate it, something turns on, rather than being on by default. So if you connect uh, gate and source together, this device is already on. You haven't had to apply any voltage to do anything. Versus, as we saw earlier, with a large electric field, we get minimum current. All right, and when VGS equals what's known as VGS off, ID is equal to zero. And VGS off is voltage from gate to source that causes ID to equal to zero. So that will be a parameter from the data sheet as well IDSS. They're both parameters there based on the construction of the FET, irrespective of the circuit that you put it in. All right, so the other thing that I should mention here is that this is a negative voltage, e.g. minus 4 volts. All right, so a negative control voltage to switch off, which is also not very convenient, right? Positive voltage is a lot easier to work with. So this device is a little bit unusual in that respect, that we've got this reverse bias condition uh, from gate to source. Okay, this is our control voltage, and this is the current we're interested in. Um, so we see there's quite a few differences actually with this device compared to our BJT. The unipolar bipolar, remember it, um, it does cause a huge change. For an n-channel device, we get electron flow. For a p-channel, we get hole flow. That, that's basically uh, the difference. Unless you get into the physics and building quite detailed models, don't really need to worry about that one. The fact that we have this voltage control is very important, and that's related to the fact that we have such a high input impedance for our FET. 
all right? And because we have such a high input impedance, we get low to no current flow into the FET, which makes it really efficient for switching applications. So it's preferred. And because it can be made physically much smaller, i.e. we can put more of them into a chip, they form the basis of virtually all modern digital integrated circuits. So all processors are going to be using FETs of some variety. Uh, not likely to be the JFET, but the FET in general. We talked about how with no electric field we get maximum current, because this channel is opened up as much as possible, whereas with a large electric field we get the minimum current flow. So we have that sort of reverse arrangement, and that might help you remember that we require a reverse bias from gate to source to control it. Voltage from gate to source equals zero, no electric field, maximum current flow. Voltage from gate to source equals a large negative voltage, so we get a large electric field here, we get minimum or no current through this device. Normally on, negative control voltage, remember these parameters, VGS off, IDSS, uh, and these are related to JFETs specifically, not MOSFETs. And of course be aware that the P-channel devices exist, but we, uh, we seldom will use them.